Hi guys and welcome back to another episode in our Rise of the Moor series. Now we've played four games in the league since the Aldershot game, so let's have a look at those highlights now. So we've continued our undefeated start to the Vanarama National Campaign and in the last month we've come out on top of a couple of close games. We picked up three points away at Old Trincum, where we were comfortable for large periods, however this was another close game. We just didn't create enough chances going forward. We were against 10 men for the last 30 minutes. Not too many fantastic performances from the Moors players, however a good run out for Ben Glasgow in this match. There were goals from John Paul Pittman and Jack Adden in this game to turn the game round having trailed during the first half. The winning goal from Jack Adden really came from a poor defensive error from Altrincham. And following that game was another away fixture for us, this time away at Braintree. It was a game of few highlights and a game of few real chances with Braintree coming closest. However, it was an eventful end of the game where either team could have snatched it really. And in this fixture, we welcome back Rowan Lyberd from injury, so that's good news for the squad as a whole. Ben Glasgow is player of the match in this fixture. And then came an interesting tie at home to Boreham Wood. Early goals for both teams in a frantic opening few moments in this fixture, including a fine finish from a tight angle from our player Kieran Bywater. 
In this fixture, Bywater and Hamelainen both bagged a brace with Hamelainen getting play of the match. This was probably our best performance since the opening day fixture against Crawley. Not too many chances for either team really in this game and large periods of the game was played in a midfield battle, but we were consistent with taking our chances in this game. Six of our seven shots on target in fact. And finally, in our last outing, we edged another close game, this time against Margate where we came out 2-1 winners. It was a close game that was quiet in the first half, but the fixture came into life after the break. Again, we did well to turn round a 1-0 deficit going into the final third of the game with Andy Thano contributing with an assist here and picking up player of the match. Again, another fixture where we had to play on a more of an attacking philosophy to chase the result that we wanted. So overall, our performances have been okay. Lots of close games so far in the opening couple of months of this season. Um, and really only two or three standout fixtures where everything came together. That being in the Crawley game and in Boreham Wood. I still think we look quite vulnerable, especially when defending set pieces, as well as on a quick counter, we're quite slow at reorganizing ourselves. However, the undefeated start to the campaign has left us at top of the table uh, on goal difference over Crawley and all of the other main contenders are really gathering pace behind us, including Dover and Tranmere, who have been putting in some good performances in recent times as well. So we finally got a healthy squad. Like I said, Rowan Liebert has returned from injury now, so we don't have any injury concerns throughout the squad. So a quick look at the stats then. Andy Thano leading the average rating, but he's only played two games, one of which from the bench. Other than that, Rowan Liebert, Ben Glasgow and John Paul Pittman are probably the pick of the bunch, around 7.4 on their average rating. Main goal contributes coming from Kieran Bywater, which is really encouraging. He's got seven goals, Rowan Liebert with four, and then John Paul Pittman and Nicky Hamelain with three apiece. As far as his assists go, mainly coming from out on the wings, Jamal Fifield with three assists, and then a cluster of players on two, including Bywater, John Paul Pittman, Nika Hamelainen, and Ben Glasgow. Pass completion rate, very promising indeed from a lot of our midfielders. Jack Adden, Andy Thano, and John Paul Pittman are on 86%, as well as players like Ollie Lee and Anthony Barry, who are in the mid 80s. Our discipline has been a lot better in the opening fixtures when compared to last year. I think playing people like Jack Byrne and Jack Haddon on more of a central midfield role rather than a more of aggressive ball winning midfielder role has really helped reduce the amount of bookings we're picking up. So really only five yellow cards across the whole team in the opening 11 games of the season is a really good return I believe. I do have a concern about the health of the finances of the club as a whole though. I'm only a couple of hundred pounds over my wage budget having been allocated the transfer fee that we mentioned at the start of the season but the club are leaking money. We've made a £100,000 loss in the opening moments of this season. And as you can see, the money that we gained from that fantastic FA Cup draw last season has more or less been consumed by the club. And a lot of this seems to be out of my control and I hope this isn't going to jeopardize my reign as Soho Moore's manager. So today, we've got a trip away to Whitehawk they're at the foot of the table. Like I mentioned before, they were promoted from the Vanarama National South last season, so they've come up into this division at the same time as us. However, differing fortunes for the two clubs. And this is also the return of Theo Street. We're gonna play Theo Street again today. Like I mentioned before, he got snapped up by Whitehawk in the off season. He's made 11 appearances for Whitehawk so far at an average rating of six and a half. I still think we made the right decision on letting this chap go. He was a fantastic servant for the club, but I believe we've improved our squads in his absence. So I hope we can make it difficult for Theo Street today. I hope he's not going to come out on top against his old club. So Whitehawk, they're 22nd place, two wins, two draws and seven losses. I believe they're going to be in a relegation battle. Teams like Aldershot and Alfreton are down there as well. Alfreton seems to be really struggling so far this year. And conversely, we have to keep maintaining our good performances and we have to keep picking up points, especially against teams like this. But Whitehawk are coming off the back of a convincing 3-0 win at home to Braintree. And obviously we played Braintree recently in quite a dull 0-0 draw. 
So this is the team I'm starting with today. The usual defensive unit, Luke Simpson in goal, Jamal Fifield at left back, Quanta and Tancock, they're playing centre of defence, and Ben Glasgow ever present on the right fullback position. Uh, we're playing three across the middle again, which I think is a, a system that's been actually working quite well for us so far. Although we've lost that extra additional defensive cover, uh, many of our goals have been coming from quick counter attacks or from set pieces anyway. So this is really allowing us to control the midfield. So Oli Lee, Jack Haddon and Zvetan Filipov are playing in the centre of the park for us today. And then Nico Hamelain on the left. Kieran Bywater, he's playing inside forward role from the right wing and Rowan Lybird is starting up top for us today. So we've got John Paul Pittman on the bench, as well as Eric Odiamba who can play on the wing, and Charlie Cooper who needs a bit of a run out today from his return from injury and to increase his fitness. We've got a very difficult month ahead of us after this game, which I'll go through after this fixture. So ideally we need to keep our players fit in the next few matches and ideally we want to avoid any unnecessary injuries as well. I'm going to put us on the standard mentality to start the game. I think I'll move to control shortly after though. And as far as the team instructions go, I'm just reverting to our usual setup, retaining possession and mixed passing and also working the ball into the box. We're also going to put um, Ben Glasgow onto an attacking duty today, I think. We've got Filipov on support. Lee is a deep line player maker, and Jack Haddon is going to be our defensive cover. And in fact, I might put Bywater on the attack as well. So it looks like everything is going to be going down our right wing, hopefully, today. So we're away, but we're back to favourites. So it's top versus 20 seconds. We need to avoid dropping points in fixtures like this, like I've mentioned, because all of the big teams that are gathering pace behind us and as I'll explain after the match, we have to play a few of them in the next month, which is a very interesting schedule for us. So they're set up 4-4-2. As you can see, Theo Street's playing at centre-back, so I'm hoping Rowan Lybert can really have a good performance against them. So I'm just going to make sure that we are marking their top two tightly and closing down their wingers as well, uh, especially as their full-backs and that system, I believe. I found our defenders seem to be losing their the players they're marking in recent fixtures. A lot of goals have come from just allowing their strikers to have too much room. We normally have that tight marking instruction for those players. Uh, that doesn't seem to be working as effectively as it should be. Maybe that's more of a, a reflection of the, the quality of our central defenders at this stage. And as far as the team talk goes, we really need um, some good contribution from these players. So. Can give them a little bit of faith today. So the Moors are way at Whitehawk and it's Whitehawk to start the game for us here. I'm hoping for a dominant performance. We seem to be stuttering a little bit in our um, in our recent fixtures. Lots of good performances and then a quite dull, boring game, but it's Liebert here. He finds Philip Harvey, he's got a lot of space. He drills the ball forward, by water at the edge of the area. Back to Ben Glasgow who's there for some support. Finds Haddon, Filipov again. Good patient ball retention here. Lee spreads it, is Glasgow gonna keep it in? He does, first time cross and Rowan Lybird. 1-0, Lybird at the front post. 15 minutes it took us to break Whitehawk down. Ben Glasgow is making his way back there. Did well to keep that ball in. It was a first time cross and Lybird got there. It wasn't Theo Street marking him, but Theo Street wasn't happy there. So we've dominated possession, 60% so far. It's Whitehawk throwing. It's Dean for them. And then midfielders are working the ball forward, drives it into North. Nahor. Does well to work it out to Peters, into Robinson. Good crossing, and Fifield clears it. And that's helped on by Lee, but only as far as their midfielders. And it's Nahor again who puts it through to North. And that was a poor, poor goal to concede there, I think. They seem to have come back into the game a little bit. They did well to work the ball around the edge of the box. That was a lovely pass through, actually, from North. And that, that seems to have caught our defenders a bit off guard. It's 1-1. It's all square here. Only the one shot on target for us so far, and Haddon cuts the ball out. Finds Lee. 
Bywater. Lee again, he's been tackled, but Haddon picks the ball, but immediately gives it away. As a goal scorer, North, who collects it. Not too happy with our, our ball retention in, in the highlights, although it's 60% possession for us and our pass completion rate is good. We don't seem to be controlling the, the game as much as I wanted to. Look at Hamelain in there, he finds Filipov, and oh, Filipov did well to keep the ball there. Finds it forward to Liebert, he's, oh, it's a good tackle. Hamelain, in, he's in the box and he finds across, what a save! Point blank header from Bywater from that Hamelain and cross. And the Whitehawk goalkeeper claws that one out. I think we're going into half time, it's, it's all square here. I'm going to tell them we're not, I'm not happy. Give them a bit of motivation. I'm going on to control as well. As far as the instructions go, I don't really want to change anything. Although we seem to be giving the ball away, overall the statistics look pretty favourable for us. Um, we've let Whitehawk come back into the game with a few decent chances though, so that's something we possibly need to consider. And we're giving the ball away again. Liebert there doesn't collect it, but it's a throw into the Moors. Glasgow finds Liebert, plays back to Lee at the edge area, and he's tackled again. Theo Street gets good tackle in. Haddon now spreads it wide to Glasgow. Can he get a good cross in? He does. And to the back post, Hamelainen. The defence should have done better there. They let the ball bounce, bounce in the in the danger area. Let's just have a look. Hamelainen comes in from deep. The ball gets away from Theo Street, I think, there. And their right back just doesn't know where Nika Hamelainen's coming from. And it's 2 1 now. Not too many fantastic performances across the middle of the park for us today, though. Only Ollie Lee is the standout performer so far. I think they've made. Um, Theo Street's come off. I think we're going to make our first change at this stage as well. So it's a goal for Rowan Lybird, as well as Nika Hamelainen. Ollie Lee has been our best performer, but his uh, fitness is probably one of the lowest out there so far. I'm going to bring Charlie Cooper on. I'm going to drop Jack Haddon off. I'm also going to drop Cooper down to that defensive midfield role. And at this stage, I think I'm going to bring Eric Odiambo on. He's going to come on for Kieran Bywater, who's only played a 6.7, and his condition is probably one of the weakest out there. So Odiambo is coming on as the winger, as support. I'm going to drop Ben Glasgow back down to support role as well. So we can think about our last substitution. I'm considering bringing John Paul Pittman on for a, a bit of a run out, but Andy Thano as well, possibly on for Philippoff. But we'll see how we go in the next 10 or 15 or so minutes. So it's 2-1 going into the final third of this game. We've not controlled possession as much as I'd like, I'd like to, as much as we have done in other fixtures. I think I'm going to make this final change now. Ollie Lee's had a good run out, but he looks shattered. But I'm going to leave him on. I think Filipov's coming off. He hasn't contributed much at all today. Not that we've seen anyway. So Andy Thano is going to be coming on for him. He's going to be central midfielder on support. I'm going to drop down to standard as well for the, for the last few moments. So quite close on possession as well as shots. Uh, obviously we've had the three clear cut chances though. Uh, of which we've taken two. So the last few moments, last 10 or so minutes here, our pass completion rate has been particularly poor today in comparison to other fixtures. And quite a quiet end of the fixture here. So the Moors with a throw in, hopefully we can just control the ball for the last minutes and Firefield drills it in. And the Thano picks it up, he finds out Yambo, then Glasgow now. Back to Thano, working across to Ollie Lee, plays the ball forward, we're going to keep this in? No, we're not, it's goal kick to Whitehawk and that should be it, and there we go. A 2-1 away win at Whitehawk, but not fantastically convincing, I don't think. Especially for a team so low in the table, and overall haven't been playing fantastically themselves this year. But a win is a win, we need to make sure that we keep picking up points. So Wilfred Nahor there for Whitehawk, he picked up player of the match. Dear Street didn't have a fantastic run out and he got brought off after 65 minutes for them. And for us, two assists for Ben Glasgow, which is brilliant, and he had nine rating. Other decent contributions today. Nika Hamalay and Rowan Lyberg with our goals. And Ollie Lee seems to dominate. He seems to control the midfield well for us.
Couple of interesting results there. Braintree beat Dover away, as well as Grimsby. They beat second place Crawley 2-1. But a couple of convincing wins for the other teams at the top. Bristol Rovers picking up a 2-0 win at home to Boreham Wood. And Tranmere as well, a 2-0 win at home to All Trincham, who are 19th place. A loss for both second and third place. That's put the end to their undefeated run. And in fact, both Crawley and Dover picked up straight wins, I think, in the last few games. That's the third win on the bounce for us. So that leaves us three points clear at the top, which is encouraging. And we're going to need a little buff like that going into the next month for us. We're about to go into October and we're about to go into our toughest run of fixtures that we've had so far in this Rise of the Moor series. In the next month, we have to play four of the top six, as well as an FA Cup fourth qualification round, which as we've talked about due to our finances, our result there is incredibly important. So in the next month, we've got to play Grimsby, who have just beaten Crawley 2-1, as well as Dover and Tranmere away. We'll be hosting Bristol Rovers, and that's only three days before the Tranmere away tie. And the other game we've got there is a home fixture against Woking, which is a little bit of respite for us against some of the bigger teams. So it's going to be a very challenging month for us and I'm expecting some incredibly tough fixtures. I really think our undefeated start is going to come to an abrupt end in this next month. And really we need to do the best we can to get a decent result out of some of these fixtures. Otherwise we're going to be quickly surpassed by these teams which seem to be generating a little bit of momentum as well. So after the, that tough run of fixtures, we'll be back for the Chester game in the next episode. That'll be at the end of October. And I'm hoping when we come back into the next episode, we won't be on the back of a, a shocking run of form. So thanks for watching again, guys. A 2-1 win for the Moors away at Whitehawk in this episode. Not a fantastically convincing result. We, we seem to be struggling to recreate the fantastic performances that we've had so far this year, such as in the opening game at Crawley as well as in that home tie against Boreham Wood. But I'm hoping for some good performances from our players in the next few fixtures. And I'm hoping that we're not going to be on the back of four or five losses when we next see you. So thanks for watching again, guys. I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.